Let's give Julia a hand and welcome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, real quick. We're going to, I want to revisit a little bit about what we talked about Monday, just to make sure we're all on the same page. And then we're going to dive into some things that are specific to customizing your resume, really making sure that in terms of the resume that you're creating, it's top notch and it's the best representation that you have to show to a potential employer or a graduate school. How many of y'all got your rough draft done? Wave it in the air. Who's brought it? Who, or you got it on your laptop? Okay. How many people, no, I raise them up. If you did it, are we talking four people in this whole class? Five, six, maybe? Okay. All right. So you guys who did it, I think you're going to be at a big advantage right now because you're not just thinking kind of mentally in your head about how this all might come together. So kudos to you. Hopefully this day will be especially rewarding for you. For those of you who didn't, you're still staring at a blank sheet of paper. So hopefully you'll be able to take some good notes and really try to, again, mentally picture this because you don't have the advantage of already picturing it on a piece of paper and having already tried to work through some of the hurdles that you'll have. You are right that it's not due till Friday, but keep that in mind, it is due on Friday, okay? All right, how many of you tried to log into Optimal Resume? A couple of you? So that's good. That's good. Um, please don't wait until last minute on Thursday night because if you have any trouble with the site, I know I won't be available. I assume Professor View won't be available in terms of just being able to provide some additional support. So at a minimum, even if you're going to put off your resume until last thing Thursday night, please, between now and, say, 5 o'clock tomorrow, go in and at least establish your account in Optimal Resume so that you know you can get into the system. Okay? All right. In today's class, again, we're going to cover a little bit more detail. So let's first talk about some resume tips. We're going to cover whether or not the resume catches the attention of the person that's looking at it. Who remembers how much time somebody will look at your resume before deciding yes, no, or maybe? Seven seconds. Very good. Seven seconds is a very short amount of time. So you have to ensure that your resume, within that very short amount of time, has the ability to capture them. There's something about your resume that prompts the reader to read more. Because you know in seven seconds they can't read the whole thing. You know they're not looking at the entire resume in that seven seconds. So your goal is to create a resume that catches enough attention to make them want to dive in and spend more than seven seconds looking at it. Okay? So we'll talk a little bit about that. Second thing, as I alluded to earlier, we're going to talk about customizing your resume and the importance of doing that and some of the different ways that you can achieve that. We're also going to talk about making your experience personalized. That'll make more sense, I think, once we go through some of the concepts. Is the document professional? We'll talk a little bit about that. And then things like key details, things you want to be sure you're including on your resume. And the, the final thing that we're talking, going to talk about is a bit of a test for your resume. We'll talk about some ideas to use in testing your resume. Okay. So let's first talk about catching their attention. When you have a resume, can I borrow yours real quick? And I know this is a, that's not a resume, is it? Okay. So here's a resume. If you saw it for seven seconds, what are some of the first things you might see about a piece of paper like this? Is it broken up? Is it organized? What's their name? Do I see that clearly? Can I read it? I mean, even simple things like what's the size of the font? If your font is so small and your words are so congested, like paragraphs, never use paragraphs on a resume. If it's very congested, very busy, you know, just difficult to read, that you're not going to catch the attention of the reader. They're going to look at it, their heads, remember, this is one of about a hundred in the stack that they're looking at. You know what it's like when you're reading a book. You know, you get to the page that's got the caption on the side and maybe a picture over here and it's organized with bullets or things like that. Those pages draw your attention, don't they? It's the ones that's little tiny print and nothing but paragraph, paragraph after paragraph after paragraph, and you think, oh, I'm just going to skim this one. Same kind of, that's how people look at resumes, okay? For those first seven seconds, those are the same kinds of human tendencies that are going to apply, okay? 
One thing I like about this one, kudos to you, one thing I like about this one is that there's not a lot of white space, okay? That's an easy mistake to make when you are new at writing your resume and have limited professional experience. You don't want lots of blank space. You don't want 14 size font that's obviously you just trying to fill in space. You have a lot to offer. So if you do your resume and you're halfway down the page and you're like, there's nothing else to tell, think outside the box a little bit more. Sit and brainstorm a little bit more. You do have more qualifications than what fills a half a sheet of paper. Whether it's volunteer activities, whether it's school activities that you've done, whether it's what your dreams are, your objectives, the kinds of skills that you've been able to develop, you can come up with more than half a page. White space on a resume is a negative attention grabber because it makes me, my immediate reaction when I look at one with a whole bunch of white space is they don't have any qualifications. They don't even think they have any qualifications. And frankly, I'm not going to go searching for qualifications. Okay? Now when we're in the interview and we're diving into more details, yeah, then I want to learn more about you. But if you can't sell the commercial enough to make me interested in your product, I'm not going to go digging to find out why you're great. This is your chance to tell me that you're great. So be sure you avoid a whole lot of white space. Okay? Avoid big fonts, things like that. Okay? One of the, well, we're, talk, we're talking about test, thank you for letting me use that. We'll talk about testing your resume, uh, resume in a few minutes, but we'll come back to this as one of those tests. All right, now let's talk about customizing. Just as I alluded to earlier, when you're applying for a job, you want to be sure that you are customizing your resume for that job, all right? So when you're talking to one audience, one company, your resume should look a little different than it does for another. What are some of the ways that you think that resume could look different? Just throw out some ideas. How would one resume to an employer look different from a resume to another employer? Educational, yeah, that's good. So if your audience is an employer versus a school, your focus may be a little different. When it comes to employer, your focus may be more on the work experience that you have and the skills that you have that are applicable to a professional position. When you're talking about a school application, you are probably going to focus more on your education and some of the academic qualities that you would bring to that school. Okay. Other ideas? Let's talk just in terms of employers. How might a resume look different between two employers? All right, let me throw out some ideas. First, your objective may look a little different. You want to be sure that you're, what you say you're searching for, which is usually what you're capturing within your objective statement, is aligned with what it is that company has to offer with the job that's open. I can't tell you the number of times when I worked at a financial institution and was trying to hire people for member service jobs, customer relation jobs, things like that. It wasn't uncommon for us, for example, to get former teachers, people that had been a teacher. And I get a resume and guess what their objective said? Any ideas? Come on, somebody, if, they, if I've got a teacher resume, a resume from a teacher, what? Enhance the, lives of Enhance the lives of children. Love working with kids. Really good at teaching people. Really good at interacting with children. Okay, I'm hiring for a financial institution, and you've just told me that your objective and your strength is to deal with folks we never deal with. Children are not usually the ones standing at the teller line. They're not usually the ones applying for a car loan. Okay? So that person totally bombed. They took an objective statement and they made it one time and they thought, okay, this is going to be on the resume of all the resumes that I send out regardless of who I send them to. That's a bomb. You don't want to do that. So how can you customize things like your objective? Well, before we get to that, let me do, do another one. Font is another one. Style is another one in terms of your resume. And the best way to clue into that is to go to a company's website. 
when you see their website, you start to get a flavor of the kind of company that is. Whether they're very formal and structured, or whether they're more playful and lighthearted, you can start to kind of sense the personality of a company when you look at their website. So if you are looking at a website that is, they're showing pictures of their um, employees that are in jeans and t-shirts and their fonts real funny and clever and their, their, their colors are, you know, the real cool trendy colors and you get a resume, you send in a resume that's Times New Roman 12 bullets, you know, everything very structured and things like that, they may look at that resume and go, the guy's great, but he won't fit in here. You want to be sure that in some respects you're aligning the personality that you're capturing in your resume with the personality that you've discovered about that company. Now I will give this caveat, never be overly informal. It's still a resume, it's still a professional document, you want to be sure that it is professional in terms of its looks. But there is a, a way to be a little bit less formal yet still professional versus very structured and formal and professional, okay? I'd encourage you with an optimal resume to play around with some of those templates and styles that are there. I think as you click on some of those different ones, you'll start to sense some that feel very rigid and formal and structured and others that flow a little bit more, that are just a little bit more, a little less formal, a little more informal, okay? In terms of your objectives, so let's go back to that. How do you customize an objective statement? First and foremost, look at the job description or the job announcement that you're applying for. Go to their website or wherever it is that you're learning about that position. Make sure that some of the words in that position description at least align with the sentiment that you're relaying in your objective, okay? Also look again at the character of the company and the personality of the company. So if it's a, let's say it's a very, let's talk about Amazon for example. Amazon we know is very trendy, they're very fast moving, they like to be on the cutting edge, they're, they're out there in terms, they are not a safe company, they are an um, aggressive company. They're looking for growth, they're charging forward. So you want your objective to communicate the idea that I'm looking for growth, I'm willing to take risk, I'm charging forward, I have great dreams. You want to take your objective and align it well with the personality of the company that you're applying for. Now I'm not saying don't be you. This isn't supposed to be a false document. You, I mean that's not going to do you any good for you to put a resume and then you don't, you're nothing like your resume or for you even to get a job with a company that you're going to hate once you're there because your personality is not well suited to it. But if it's a company and a job that attracts you and obviously those types of things are going to factor into that, be sure that you're giving yourself the right, you're painting the right picture within your resume to show that good connection to show that yes, what you have to offer is a good match with what the company is looking for, okay? So that's another very easy way to customize your objective. So you're gonna look at what the specific job is and make sure that your objective aligns well with what the job is and look at the character or personality of the company and be sure that your objective at least is well suited for that. You may not use the same kinds of words, or you might, but just make sure there doesn't seem to be a big chasm between what it is you're looking for, which is what your objective is supposed to be telling them, and what it is this company has to offer. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, the other thing that you want to keep in mind is as you go through past your objective statement within your resume content, Read back through the job posting or the job description that you have and highlight some of those things that you can tell are important in that job. Whether it's you need to be very good with people or you need strong analytical skills or you work well in groups. All those kinds of secrets about that job are oftentimes captured within the job posting, okay? Take that highlighted list that you create from the job posting and go back to your resume and see how often you can find those kinds of words or those kind of sentiments in the strengths, in the, the duty descriptions that you've given for the jobs that you've held. 
different achievements that you've got and all those different sections on your resume. Maybe you're talking about volunteerism, maybe you're talking about school activities, maybe you're talking about work experience. But if you in the job description have highlighted things like works really well with people and is able to build rapport easily, let's say those are two things you've highlighted in this job posting. If you don't have anything in your resume in any of those sections that talk about your ability to get along with people, you've missed the mark. They're going to look at that and say, well, it doesn't line up. The other thing to keep in mind is that oftentimes, particularly with large organizations now, this initial resume review is automated. There are software programs out there that do this initial review. Those software programs are, um, the language of it or the criteria is based on that job description. So the, the software is going to score your resume based on how many of these complementary characteristics exist between what the job is and what your resume contains. Another really good reason to look for some of those keywords, because when you're matching keywords, that's adding those points onto this automated review that's happening of your resume. Okay? So it can be a make it or break it thing. Whether it's done by a computer or it's done by a human, that's the kind of thing they're going to be looking for. Make sense? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. There aren't very, there, it's expensive software. So you're really only talking to big dogs that are doing that. But like a ConocoPhillips or some of the other places, you might run into that. Okay? All right. The next thing we're going to talk about is personalizing your experience. Okay? Never simply list your job duties. And what I mean by this is if you can picture those statements coming out of a job description, that's not the kind of words you want to use on your resume. How many of you have been in a job where you actually had like a job description or some kind of listing of the job duties that you had? Some of you? Okay. What I'm telling you is use that as a guide. Don't use those words. It's way too sterile. It doesn't help to communicate to the person that you're applying to what you can achieve or what you learned from the job that you had. What you want to do is be sure that you look at results. You talk about, again, you can talk, in, you can talk about the duty or the task that you completed, but think about it in terms of the greater picture. So let's think just real quickly about cleaning house, just as an analogy. I can say I scrubbed the toilets. Or I can say, I made my home a welcoming and clean place. Do you see the difference between the two? The task as an employer, the task doesn't interest me. Our tasks may not even be the same. But I want to know how you contributed to the success and the results of the company that you work for, or the school that you attended, or the team that you were involved in. Okay. So think about what you did, and then take one more leap to what did that mean for them and what did that mean for me? All right, let me show you a couple of examples outside of toilets. All right, so the first statement is, I sell Avon products. Sounds like, wouldn't that be great on a resume? You listed Avon in your dates and this is what I did. That's a task, that's a duty. But let's talk about what that task or duty achieved. What was the result for you or for the company that you worked for? So with that one, I sell Avon, mm -mm. I cultivate strong customer relationships, okay? I suggest products, I increase sales based on the needs of the customer. Can you see the difference between those two? Just a task or a duty versus the achievement that you were able to gain. Second one, I taught swimming lessons to kids. It's true enough, it is exactly describes what you did, but think about it from result, what you achieved. I developed rapport and trust with kids. You can't teach them how to swim without them liking you and them trusting you. You uh, developed that with parents so that they trusted you with putting their kids in a place where they could die. You were teaching swimming lessons. And that you taught life-saving swimming skills. Okay. So it's, it really, once you get into this habit, it can be very easy. Just keep asking yourself, and this is going to sound very blunt, ask yourself the question, so what? You say you taught swimming lessons. So what? What impact did that have? 
who did that matter to and how did it matter? Okay. When you start asking that question of so what, so what, so what, so what, you start to drill down to some of these things that you were actually able to achieve. This is the result. This is what happened because I did this duty or task. Okay? I completed cashier duties. Now, I served customers efficiently, completing their transactions, providing guidance on product locations, and maintaining a professional and clean area. Okay? Now, when you think about this third one, I want you to focus for a minute on where the emphasis of this is. For this one, much of the emphasis is on what it gained for the employer. So if you worked for a grocery store, does a grocery store really care that you process the transactions? I mean, they know it needs to be done. What's the difference between a good employee and a bad employee if you're only looking at processing transactions? I mean, have you guys been at a, going through, let's say, Starbucks, and the guy's a jerk that checks you out? You know, he won't speak. You can tell he's having a lousy day. He uses a bad tone. He barely even acknowledges that you're there. He just takes your money and processes your transaction, okay? Completes his cashier duties. Compare that to the guy that greets you, asks you what else he could add to your order in a very nice way, thanks you for your business, all those kinds of things, makes you want to go back, right? That's very important to this employer. They want you to come back. They want their employees to be representing their company well. So remember, when you're talking about translating this to personalized uh, information about you, not just a list listing of duties or tasks, answer the question in terms of what result you gain for you and what result you gain for your employer or your school. Okay? Make sense? Yes? Can I put you on the spot? You sure can. More examples. Courtney, could I use what you turned in? Let her look at that because it's actually to your advantage because you can let fix it and turn it in on the right. <laughs> Just look at her objectives and give us examples how you changed. Okay, I was actually impressed with some of the things that you said because of the fact yeah. that you were using some of the strong verbs. Um, I thought it was good. Okay, so here, key skills, handles creative criticism. I must admit I'm not quite sure what creative criticism is, but I have heard that buzzword, but it's one of those things that I look at and say, okay, what does that mean? So when they tell you you're no good, but say it in a sweet way, you, you're okay with that or what? But anyway, um, here, strengthen my ability to facilitate multiple orders. That's good. You know, it's a good, strong word. It wasn't just I waited on several tables at once. It was good action verbs, things like that. Collaborated with managers and fellow employees to get orders to the entire restaurant. That's, those are good words. Collaborated is a very hot topic right now. The idea of being able to work together as a team, not being an island where you're only interested in whether or not you've got your stuff done, but you're also helping others, things like that. So to me, there's some very good examples on this resume. Did you, were you seeing any that you wondered well, about? Was, one that I was curious about is like our college athletics. You were said don't make it a task, and it says strengthen my ability to balance and handle multiple jobs at a time. Is that, is that a good? Yeah, to me that's a good thing. Be okay. Because you're talking about what was the overall result of that. It wasn't just I, I was able to run faster or train myself to, to run faster or whatever the sport is. You know, it's, you've talked about what that meant overall. You know, what was the overall objective, the, the result of what you gained or your employer or ed educator gained from that? So good job. <laughs> All right, so here, I want you to try it real quick. You've got one minute. Ready? I volunteered at an after school program for youth. Real quick, write that statement with this idea of result, not task. That's kind of the task. Write it in terms of result, either for you or and or the organization.
30 seconds. Okay, time. I know you haven't perfected it, even if you've got it started. But some of you offer how you started that. Or some of you are like, holy cow, that was not nearly enough time. <laughs> Anybody have kind of how they started or what angle they were taken? Yeah? So what was the result he was focused on? One word. One word that was the focus of his results. Kids. It was all about the kids. I'm helping them to develop these different skills, things like that. Okay. So he was talking about the impact he was having on these kids. That's very good. Because that's what they're in the business about. That's what you're trying to achieve. What, what, what were some of the other ideas? Great. So it did the same thing. Hmm? Can you what yeah. Will you repeat it louder? I said I was able to impact the lives of younger children while at the same time impacting mine. Okay. Able to impact the lives of young children at the same time impacting my own. So that's good. It's very good. Now from there, on your resume, you may do that as kind of an overall statement. And then you could bullet under there three or four different tasks that you completed. So you don't have to completely eliminate the concept of showing your tasks, but that can't be it. You can't just add that one statement about a task and call it good, okay? Talk about the impact of the result of what you were able to achieve. Okay, you wanna try one more? One more, I worked as an office assistant at Johnson's Health Mental Health Center. Okay, throw out some ideas. What are some of the angles you're taking? Go ahead. Um, I just said I help maintain the environment comfortable for those coming into the mental health center. I help to maintain a comfortable environment for those coming into the mental health center. That's a result, isn't it? Clients are comfortable when they come in here. That's essential to a mental health center. So it's looking at what would that organization be trying to achieve and how did you facilitate that? Very good. Others? You could say something like, I kept the office running smoothly and effectively so that the counselors were very able to focus on their patients. I kept the office running smoothly and efficiently so the counselors could focus on patients. I paraphrased it a little there. But yeah, that's great. Why might that be attractive to an employer? What's part of what was communicated in that statement? You, you get the job done, you're organized. Care about the quality of your work. Patients get better care, what'd you say? Care about the quality of your work. Care about the quality of your work. There was an undertone to that statement that would have struck me as an HR person, and that's collaboration. Because that, in that statement, you're telling me, you know it's not all just about you. You know that what you do is a piece of 
the whole picture, the whole puzzle of what we as an organization are trying to achieve. Okay? You didn't look at that and think it doesn't really matter and I don't really impact anybody else. No, you saw that by you doing your part, other people can more effectively do their part. Okay? All right, any other ideas you want to share? I thought about it in terms of I was the first person that the clients met when they walked into the medical mm -hmm. center. I was the first person that they met when they walked in. That's very good. It, it implies that you're going you're, you're gonna to put the best face on mm -hmm. the medical center. And that you rec it, it implies that you're going to put your best foot forward and make it good, but it also shows that you recognize again that you have a role in the overall objectives of, of this organization. You have a role in making sure that when people come in, this organization is well represented, makes them look good. So it shows me that you, you're tuned into that. That's a very positive quality for me when I'm looking for an employee. Okay? Any other ideas? Yeah, where you, humility, is that kind of the idea that you're getting to? That you're willing to do some of the grunt work without expecting to be top dog, right? Yeah, that's good, that's good. And you can communicate in that, and I think even Chantry, the way you did it, talked about that, that hey, you know, I, I did my part of it, recognizing that it was part of the overall picture. And it didn't bother me that I wasn't the one providing the, service, the counseling services. I was content doing what I was called to do there. Good. Other thoughts? Okay. Let's dive into the next concept. Oh, one thing to keep in mind, optimal resume, remember, has some of these action verbs, action words, and examples. So if you're trying to achieve this with your resume and you're just getting stumped, I just don't know how else to say it, remember that within optimal resume, you can go in and just click on those samples and click on uh, action words, and it'll even break it down to different types of words that you might be trying to find, strategic verbs, operational verbs, things like that. Okay? Lots of really good resources there on optimal resume. All right, so this question of is your resume professional is another thing we want to talk about just a little bit. Be sure, absolutely sure, you're checking for typos, you're checking for grammatical errors. I know that you hear people say that over and over and over again. Every time you hear about doing a resume, you hear people say, well, don't have any typos. It's astounding how many typos exist in a resume, how many grammatical errors exist in a resume. It's also important to remember that all of these rules that we're talking about, all of these suggestions apply to everything that you're submitting to the employer. So if you have a cover letter, which you very likely will have, that's accompanying your resume, all of this stuff should apply there too. The idea of achieving results, not just talking about tasks. The idea about making it look good so it captures their attention very quickly. And all of these notes in terms of professionalism. There's no typos, there's no grammar errors, and it's well written. When it comes to a cover letter, you're talking a lot more a bit about communication and writing. In a resume, it's a lot of bullets. Very short statements, bullets, things like that. It's quick glances. But in a cover letter, you probably are talking about two or three paragraphs, okay? Not real lengthy, but a couple, two or three paragraphs, okay? So within that, be absolutely sure that your sentences make sense. You don't have run-on sentences. All that stuff, when you think back to Grammar 101, what did you learn about effective writing? Be sure that you're following those rules, because that is a good representation, okay? It's very interesting, I don't know if we talked about this in this class the other, other day, but I, I don't think so. It came up in another class I was teaching about this. People ask, do I have to have a cover letter and is a cover letter important? I will tell you that in the HR world, you will get about a 50-50. Some HR people will say, I never look at cover letters. I just flip right past and go right to the resume. Other HR people will say, I totally look at the cover letter. When I first started in HR, I was the assistant to the HR manager at the company I worked for. She never looked at cover letters. She, she could care less about cover letters. I actually spent more time on the cover letter than I did on the resume. Why do you think that might be? What do you think my thought process was in terms of cover letters? Any ideas? The way it's going to be organized? 
formal, those kinds of things. Yeah, it's some of the ideas that we talked about in terms of your resume and the cover letter being consistent. A look at their personality a little deeper about who that person is. Yeah, that's right. It gives a little bit more. Here's, here was my attitude about it. The person's resume has been the subject of mass scrutiny. You spent hours building your resume. Then you had 15 people look at your resume. You took it to your professor and said, hey, does this look OK? You have looked at that resume over and over and over and over and over again to make sure that it's this masterpiece of art. Your cover letter you did in about five minutes after you read my job posting. Okay, Which one to me is a better reflection of your work? The cover letter. Because I guarantee you for most of the jobs, most of the tasks that you're going to complete for me as an employer, you're not going to have the opportunity to have 15 different people look over your work before you finalize it. You're not going to have the opportunity to ponder it for two or three or four weeks before you decide it's a done deal. It's going to be a, hey, I need this and I need it in 30 minutes kind of thing. So how do you perform when that's the parameters of the task? And for me, a cover letter communicated that, that expectation or that ability more effectively than the resume did. Okay. So bottom line, what I tell you is, you may get one of those HR people that flip past your cover letter and it would just make you sick because you're like, I spent time making sure it was really nice and they didn't even look at it. But you might get one of the HR people like me that spends more time on your cover letter than I do on your resume. Okay? So when you submit that packet, whatever you're turning into the employer, just be sure that every single piece that you're submitting is excellent because you never know what's the piece that's going to capture their attention. What's the piece that's going to take the bulk of their time? Where are they going to spend most of their time and focus? You're not going to ever know that, so make sure every piece is perfect. Okay? Okay. Um, ponder the interpretation. Let me, oh, consistent format. The idea, we talked about it a little bit the other day, where your resume looks like it goes with your cover letter, which looks like it goes with your list of references. All those things have the same font. They, they, they complement each other. They, it obviously looks like a packet that goes together. Okay, You want to be sure about that. On your resume, if you are, for example, listing your experience 